Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Welcome to Living in the World International Church, a church where we preach Christ undiluted. And happy new month to every single person. This is the month that you will have undeniable proofs that you serve a living God. Your testimony shall not elude you this month in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You shall not only be a surprise to your friends, to your family, you shall also be a surprise to yourself this very month of September in the precious name of Jesus Christ. As our custom is, we begin a series of teaching this month of September, which is titled The Wonders of His Words, because God's Word contains wonders. I believe without a shadow of doubt that God's Word have answers to the challenges of the world today. Because we've not sat down to research, to study it, does not mean it does not contain the solution to, we, to what we need. Now, if the world contains solution, God's word, I mean, contains solution to the world's challenges, then he has enough to actually take care of the things that we need in our own lives. That's why we're going to be looking through the words of God as our toolbox to begin to examine the various resources that we have available to us. And not only looking at them, but also learning how to use them. Because no matter how many resources that you have, if you don't learn to use them, it will never be enough. Now, I'm praying that in this season that God himself will open your eyes of understanding to really impact into you the true meaning of his words. Because one should get an understanding of God's word and have access to your inheritance in him, then all things will become possible for you. You see, Jesus himself opened the books of Isaiah and then he read where it is written of him that he has been anointed to preach the good news, to help those who are in bondage, to bind the brokenhearted, and so on and so forth. Once he found what was written about him, his life became something that everybody could read and write about. Now, once you find something that God has said about you, particularly in the scriptures, that is pertaining to you, then your life will become something everybody writes and reads about. I believe that this season is that time because you shall have undeniable proofs that you serve a living God. Now, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and praise and we bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for peace. Thank you for joy. Thank you for the harvest of last month. We give you all the glory and praise. Now, Father, as we sit at your feet to listen to your word, please open our eyes of understanding and reveal to us, O Lord, your word to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I'm very, very excited about the month of September, especially with the prophetic word that we shall have undeniable proofs that we serve a living God. That means God is about to show up on our behalf in all situations of our lives. So whether it be in our career, in our business, in our family, in our relationship, God will show up on our behalf in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the books of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says, For the words of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joint and the marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, that scripture alone is loaded. I'm hoping that over the series of teaching, we shall, we shall take them apart that, that very verse, and begin to look at it individually. The word of God is living. Folks, we live in a dying world. Every day, somebody is complaining about the ozone layer. We're talking about global warming. We're talking about the ice cap melting. We talk about some disease that's ravaging the world. But yet, the words of God contain power for it all. It contains a solution for it all. The Bible makes us understand that the word of God is living. It's a living organism itself. So it has the power to overthrow every illegal government set up in our heart, in our spirit, in our soul. Why don't we give God's word a chance in our life? I'm not trying to brainwash anybody. But the scriptures has, been, has gone through so much scrutiny that any other book in existence 
The Bible has gone through so much scrutiny that any other book in existence. And guess what? It has stood the test of time. So I can base my life, I can base my hope, I can base my future on the God's word because it has been proven. It says the words of God has been tried seven times in fire. Psalm 6 verse 12 has never been found wanted. Even scientific accuracy can be found in the Bible. While people were still believing that the earth was flat, the Bible tells us that God sits on the circles of the earth. While people were still trying to bleed human beings um, because they believe too much blood in your system makes you sick, the Bible tells us the life of the body is in the blood. Why people were doing all kinds of things, saying the stars in the heavens are numbered, the Bible tells us that the, uh, the stars in the, in, the, in the heavens cannot be counted. God spoke to Abraham. He spoke to Job. So the Bible has scientific proofs. Now, occasionally you will hear uh, scientists trying to disprove the Bible that what the Bible has said is wrong. But give them time, they will catch up. That's what I always tell them. Eventually, they always change their mind. Science is always changing, but God's word remains the same. There's always new discovery, but God's word remains the same. That tells you that even through scientific scrutiny, the Bible has never been found wanting. Archaeologists have used the Bible to be, to, be, to be able to actually determine certain locations of artifacts around the world. I mean, we can talk about the pharaohs. The Bible talks about the pharaoh. And we can still see the pyramids standing today. So the wonders of God's word shows to us that it is pure it is simple, it is accurate, and we can base our life and our future, our hope, our existence on God's word. Folks, I think it's time that we read the words of God more and pay careful attention to what he says. Because without careful attention to what God says, we might be shortchanging our own self. And this has been something many Christians have done. You see, a million pounds or a million dollars in an account somewhere in the world that belongs to you is useless to you because you don't know where it is. That's why it's important to begin to locate the treasures stored in God's word. Oftentimes, humorously, I've said that many people will get to heaven. And, you know, the sadness will not be they didn't make it into the kingdom of God. The sadness will be when they compare their life in respect to how God has planned it. And all the treasures that God wanted to give to them. And they see discrepancies that are so large. They will weep and they wish that they had read their Bible more to find out more about what God says. You see, there are things that were lost in Adam. That's why oftentimes, oftentimes we, we might get to look at this, this, the teaching on open your redemptive package. The things that were lost in Adam, if you study carefully the books of Genesis, I read chapter 1, verse 26, you see all the blessings that God gave unto us. You will discover that he blessed us with so many blessings in heavenly places and on earth, giving us dominion and authority over the earth. But if you're living a life that's below that, then you're not accessing the treasure that Christ has returned to you. Now, we need to begin to understand this. God's word in the dying world will give us peace and assurance and hope that the world cannot take away from us. That's why Jesus Christ could sleep comfortably when he was sitting or lying in, in, the, in the boat and the, the, sea, the sea was raging and raving. Psalms 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have they who love your word. Nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. When you, the words of God is sitting deeply in your heart and taking deep roots in your heart, in your life, you have nothing that moves you and makes you stumble any longer. Now, 
perhaps I'll share a few reasons, and I've shared a few already, but let me share some concrete ones that you want to write down. God's word has the power to transform your life. We've seen many people who were drug addicts, who were prostitutes, who were killers, who were murderers, that became Christians because of the transformation and power of the, of, the, of the words of the Lord. Remember, you're, you are what you eat. This process of salvation and sanctification, becoming more like Christ, is a process, a metamorphosis, so to say, that you're, you're what you eat. In other words, if you keep eating the words of God habitually, because the Bible makes us understand that God's word is the food of the spirit. Many of us, our spirit man is stabbed. Sometimes they, they show images of starving children in Africa as a means to solicit money from people, especially in the western part of the world. And oftentimes, when I look at those pictures, it shows people who are dehydrated, malnutritioned, and then, you know, they're really in need of food and clothing to help them become, you know, what God has destined for them to become. So, if God was supposed to show us our spirit man, many of us look like that image, spiritually, I mean. Physically, we might look robust, we might look healthy, we might look muscular, we might look hefty, we might look plumpy, etc., etc. But spiritually, we might be anemic. We might actually be malnutritioned. We actually might be dehydrated. So we need to begin to hit the word of God because it transforms us, it energizes us, it revives us. I remember the story that was told some time ago of a woman who hated mangoes because when she was a little girl, I think her parents bought a farm and they had a cow on the farm. And the cow normally, you know, is the supply of the milk. They don't buy milk from the shops. But Cows and mangoes go together because cows love mangoes. There was a mango tree around the vicinity of the farm. So every day the, mango, the cow began to eat the mangoes as they began to drop on the floor and they go ripen. And the cow enjoyed the mango as long as he's eating, he has a fresh supply of it and he kept eating it. Suddenly, everybody in the house noticed that the milk of the mango, the milk from the cow had a mango flavor to it. And because they were not going to the shop to buy any more um, uh, milk, everybody began to drink mango-flavored milk. And that's how she got really nauseated about the mango flavor, and then she stopped liking mangoes. If cows can eat mango and produce mango-flavored milk, how much more Christians if we hit the word of God? We can only produce Christ-like lifestyle when we begin to eat the word of God. So it's a spiritual food that we all need. And the Bible says in the books of First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, As newborn babes, we should desire earnestly the pure word of the word, the pure milk of the word of God, that we might grow thereby. Number two, the Bible says that in the books of Romans chapter 10, verse 17, they say faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's word has the power to bring faith in our lives. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, perhaps one of my favorite scriptures, it says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It will be a waste of time to pray to God if you don't have faith. It will be a waste of time to go on your knees and begin to shout to heaven, I say, because the, the volume of your voice can only extend to the range that you can shout to, but not beyond that. It will never ascend to the throne of grace because it had no faith attached to it. So, we need the words of God as we begin to read, or begin to study, begin to meditate. It produces faith in our life. A strong faith is what we need to overcome the challenges that we face in the world today. It's possible to hear God's word and not hear it at the same time. Because we have physical ears and we have spiritual ears. 
if it passes through our physical ears and not into our spiritual ears, then it will not produce any fruit in our lives. That's why Jesus Christ said to us in the books of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 15, that he that has ears, let him hear. He was not talking about the physical hear. Because everybody was hearing physically, but they were not listening with their spiritual ears. When we begin to listen with our spiritual ears, he begins to take root in our lives and then begins to bring forth fruits in our lives. The words of God begin to take fruits in our hearts and they begin to bring forth fruits in our life. The kind, this kind of hearing is rich of faith and that kind of faith is what provokes God into action. Number three, the words of God has the power to heal. The Bible says in the books of Psalm 107 verse 20, he said he sent his word, he healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Some version says oppression. And the life of Jesus Christ, if you study his ministry carefully, Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13, you talk about Jesus Christ healing the centurion servant. And the centurion said, in verse 8, he said, speak only your word and my servant will be healed. And he sent his word and the servant was healed at, at that very hour. So what are we saying, folks, is that God's word has the power to produce healing in our lives. If there's any form of pain and ache, guess what? We have the word of God to fight it and destroy it. Don't condone it any longer. The Bible says the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Don't condone it any longer. See, you can only condone the devil thus far. When you get to a stage of enough is enough, you will tell him to go. Many of us have enough. We have a very high tolerance level for the devil. I don't. I mean, we can con condone a lot of nonsense from the devil. I cannot. That's why I keep. That's why I keep praying. My I stand as at, at my watch all the all the time, destroying the powers of the enemy. The Bible says, it says, for this purpose, the Son of Man was made manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. As he is, so we are in this world. Number four, God's word gives us the power to fight the enemy. We are made to understand in the books of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, that God's word is the sword of the spirit. Many of us are confronting the devil without having any weapon. That's why I say to people, whenever you are praying, please have a scripture that you're standing on when you're praying. Have a Bible verse or two that you're holding. Because that's the sword of the spirit that gives you the authority. You're waging at your enemy. The devil has his own tricks. He has his own weapon. But we also have a greater weapon. In the face of, um, of a nuclear weapon, a grenade is a baby. I mean, we know what a grenade is in, on, uh, when we talk about the army. The, gra the grenade is a bomb that you throw and it explodes within a few seconds. But when you're talking about a nuclear weapon, you can wipe out an entire continent. So God's word is like a nuclear weapon and the devil's tricks is like a grenade. Many of us are more afraid of the devil's tricks than we are afraid of the power in God's word. That's why we just simply put under the pillow and sleep at night and we think we will keep away bad dreams. <laughs> God's word has the power to defend the defenseless. Make ordinary people into warriors and army. Make them dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. That's why he will stop you from reading your Bible. Or the devil, I mean. He will stop you from praying. He will stop you from using the, the words of God. Keep telling him it is written. That's why Jesus kept telling him that in the books of Matthew chapter 4. From verse 1 to 11. He kept telling him. It is written. It is written. It is written. Because he kept waving the sword. And the devil had no answer. Now, having said all of this, as I begin to close, how do I engage or use the word of God to my benefit, for my blessing, for my moving forward? How do I use the word of God? Number one, receive the word of God. It is so simple, but yet it's complicated. Often I say this, it's the simplicity of the gospel that makes it complicated for the kind of minded. It is so simple. Pay your thighs and offering. I'll rebuke the devourer. 
man, the pastor is just trying to get rich off me. I'm not paying no thanks. Okay, no problem. And then all of a sudden, when you find that there's challenges in your finances, you're crying to God and God is saying, well, I've told you, pay your tithes and offering. Don't make vows before me that you have no intention to keep. You see, one thing I, I dislike is people that are dishonest. People who forget their words. And I often tell Christians, you know, in the good old days, I mean, it's easy for you to look at people, shake your hands with them and believe the deal is done. Because you're a man of your word. In this day and age, uh, you must have a contract dated, signed, witnessed by people so that people would not all of a sudden develop amnesia in the future and they say all of a sudden, well, I can't remember saying that. But don't go before God because everything you say is written down. Don't make vows before him. When you have received it, you receive the word, once you make a vow before him, be quick to pay your vow because then you show integrity before God and then he can give you greater things. Remember, he that is faithful in little shall be faithful in much. Spend time to research to God's word. Many of us don't spend time to research at all. Thank God for things like uh, Strongest Concordance, uh, books like that. They're, they're very good. I mean, thank God for also for the internet because you can put any keyword into the into the internet webpage and almost it will come forth. If it's the area of healing that you need help or you need light to shine, the light of God's word, then go seeking for scriptures that has to do with healing. If it's the area of fruitfulness, then go and seek for scriptures that have to do with fruitfulness. This is what helps. But if you do nothing, then don't expect something to happen from heaven. I remember this. I was a young boy. I think I was in secondary school those days. And I wanted something to um, um, something from the Lord. Very young. So I went out to look at the Bible. And we had these little Bibles. They're called them Gideon Bibles. So small they are. You can put them in your back pocket. And they had, I think, the New Testament. So I opened the back of it, and there's concordance at the back of it, and I read it. And there was a particular scripture or some things I was looking for. And that was the, the scriptures I stood on. I was praying with it. Now, I was a boy maybe of 12, maybe 13 at most. I was not more than that. I'm sure of that. And I prayed with those scriptures. And that word got me the answer. You won't believe it that God actually answered that prayer. Now, if at age of 12, I can imagine that that could happen, how much more now? God's ways are always prescribed. They don't change. His principles don't change. His method might, but his principle remain the same. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. So research and find out that area that you have problems in. If it's your health, then sit down, find scriptures on, on healing. If it's marital bliss, then find scriptures on marital bliss and then begin to pray on them. Pray with them, rather. Number three, respond to the words of God. Obedience produces blessings. We know the scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Obedience is one crucial principle of living as a child of God. It shows you we are submissive to the God's word. Please, let us be let us respond properly to God's word. If he's telling us to do something, then we must do it. Whether in the areas of finance, in paying tithes and offering, whether in the prayers of how we relate to our brothers and sisters, we must focus on doing what is asked us to do. Without obedience, none of the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 can be our portion. Let us be moved by God's word. Let us respond to it according to what it has said. And I believe that the blessing attached to those words will come our way in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, as I begin to close, the blessings of God's words are numerous, so numerous, sometimes we can't actually count them all. But I'll share a few with you. Many of us need counsels. We need a way out of the situation we are in. 
And sometimes the men of God are not around, the women of God are not around, the friends and family, those that we trust, their counsel are not around, available for us. But guess what? God's word is always a guide. His word is a light onto our pathway. And to walk the narrow path in this day and, in this day and age, this dying world, we need enough light. And that's what God's word does. The God's word instructs us. God's word instructs us. God's word gives us instructions on what to do, how to do it, where to go, where not to go. We just need to open our spirit, man, to the leading of the Holy Spirit as it begins to expatiate the, the words of God in our heart. Number three, God's word brings blessings into our lives. Many of us are blessed, but we don't even know it yet. We have an inheritance in God we yet to even access. God can never run out of resources. Every resources of God will outlive, outlive the children of men. So what I want to pray is that each and every one of us will begin to locate God's resources for our life to accomplish all that he has called us to do. This month is a month of undeniable proofs for each and every one of us. We can only access that when we truly know what has been given to us in his word. Because that's our compass. That's our direction. That's what brings us into the fullness of his glory. Many of us are running helter-skelter. But what we need to do right now is to sit down, get a copy of the scriptures, and really go through it until you find answers. I think two days of laboring and researching is worth more than two years of running around helter-skelter, going to see one prophet, one man of God sleeping on the mountain, and doing all kinds of things in the name of looking for answers. There's no quick and dirty solution when it comes to God's principle. His principle remains the same. His methods might change. I want to assure you that this month, you will have undeniable proofs that you serve a living God. Now, get ready because the words of God will be coming with great force and power. We're going to open a new chapter in your life to the glory and praise of his holy name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless you. And we thank you for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for your word that's come forth with life and power this morning. And thank you, Lord, because you are faithful. You have brought us safely into the month of September. Lord, I, open, I pray that you open the good treasures of your word unto us this very day. That they will fall upon fatter grounds in our heart. Take deep root downwards and bring forth good fruits in our lives. That everyone will know that we serve a living God. To the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen.